This lecture covers one important movement under the peasant movement that took place in the late 90s. It is the Naxalbari movement. Naxalbari is a small village in Darjeeling, West Bengal. The movement took place in March 1967, which was an armed struggle. It was also known as the beacon light for revolutionary struggle in India. The movement called for a huge tribal participation from various tribes like the Mundas, Santals, Orans, etc. These tribal people were mainly engaged in farming, forestry and tea plantation. So how did this movement originate? We'll be talking about this. What happened was, the tribes back then, they used to live in isolation and they enjoyed their own autonomy, their own culture, their own traditions and the way of living that they were going on with. But with a lot of uh, intrusion from the government, from the forest department, from the British officials, the tribes were gradually asked to evict the land that they were working on for so long. Another dimension was they were made to pay heavy interest on they had taken from money lenders. This led to a lot of frustration in the tribal people who were previously owners of the land and then they were asked to evict the land and pay heavy interest also. This led to the Naxalbari agitation. Coming to the concept, so this movement was against the propertied and landed class. It was between the landed class versus the tribals. The concept revolved around Marxian socialism. Marxian socialism talks about how the resources of the society must be distributed equally among all the members. But there was violence forced eviction by landlords to the farmers and the tribal peoples, because of which it converted into a violent movement. Some of the famous leaders related to Naxalbari movement are Punjab Rao, Kumar Kishan, Vinod Mitra, Charu Machumdar, Kanu Sanyal and Panchum Sarkar. The government also arrested them to suppress this movement and this is one of the main reasons why this movement was not a big success. <coughs> Coming to the causes, there were various factors which led to this movement. We just studied about one aspect that the tribals were exploited but there were other factors like economic factors, political factors and others. Economic factors. There was a dissatisfaction among the farmers and the tribals who were from that area. It was a relative dissatisfaction. That means the farmers in other areas were doing relatively better than the farmers in Naxalbari area. And hence the productivity was also poor. So there was a sense of dissatisfaction. Second, illegal land grabbing by zamindars. It led to indebtedness and high interest rate on loans was also charged. The uneducated farmers and the tribals, they just named their land to strangers because they did not know any better. Therefore, they were exploited in the form of land mortgage, high interest rates and loss of land ownership. The land of which one belonged to them was given to the Britishers or the government or the money lenders took them. Second, political factors. The judiciary system was partial and it was inclined towards money lenders and zamindars. Therefore, the farmers and the tribals, they were uneducated and they also had no support as well. <clears throat> political factors also included the Marxist extremists, where the fight was between landlords and the tribals, which took a violent form. Another factors, some other important factors were peasants were forced to return bakshish land that they were given by the government. It was a propaganda by the zamindars so that the peasants and the tribals could be further exploited. Slowly, when the farmers began gaining consciousness and awareness, they tried to form organizations and it led to farmers' organizations. The farmers' organization, they started working for the welfare of the Naxalbari peasants and tribal people. But again, this movement was still 
not a success and it failed even after the efforts of many leaders and the farmers organization as well so why did it actually fail the first cause is use of violence there was a lot of violence involved because the farmers were exploited and they were agitated this movement was also on a very small scale and it could not spread to further areas therefore they had very little support from others or from the masses second this movement felt like an illusion of that gave an illusion of revolution the movement looked like it will be transforming something it will be bringing a revolution but what happened as a result the real issue the small tiny local issues they were neglected and the revolution phase that was that they started looking for something else they started looking for other issues so that this small movement which was target based it turned into something else therefore this was also a very over ambitious movement it did not bring about any structural change in the feudal system because it was targeting only on the plight of farmers and tribals but what about the existing structure what about the feudal system that was there it did not change or challenge it there were internal conflicts as well related to leadership <coughs> because they thought it was going to turn into something bigger therefore it led to a lot of internal conflicts political interests when there is a slight idea that something is going to turn into a lot bigger than it was initially imagined to be a lot of selfish interests also come into being and they were given more weightage the west bengal government could not give their support to the leaders of the movement or to the movement itself and the leaders started getting arrested therefore it led to the failure of the movement. i hope you got this lecture let's do some questions now question number 1 here are two statements the first is latest reports of ministry of home affairs shows reduction in naxal affected red corridor statement 2 however to completely eradicate the naxal movement government needs collective multi pronged approach from government civil society as well as common masses this is absolutely true if at that period of time in 1967 the naxal bari movement had gotten the support from government or from the common masses it would have become something entirely different and it would perhaps not failed so today the government and the masses the civil society they all are trying to have a multivariated approach to deal with the naxal movement so the answer will be option number 3 both the statements are true Question number two: Which of these government initiatives work for local communities' rights and interests? So the answer will be all of these work for the local communities' rights and interests. Thank you for watching.